Hi and welcome to Knitting Blooms episode number 32. Today is December 3rd and welcome to the show. My name is Tina, also known as Bloomy Knitter on Ravelry, Ravelry and Plurk. And you can find me as Tina Robbins on Facebook and on Google+. We are having an early, early morning recording this morning. <laughs> it's about 7.30. And I'm recording early because I have um, knit club today at my house. And all the girls are coming over. I think there's going to be um, 10 or 11 of us today. So we're going to have a, a big group today which is awesome. So I'm really looking forward to spending the day with all my knitting friends. Well, the ones that live local. I would love to spend the day with everybody all the time, but that's not always possible. But there's going to be another virtual knit night coming up soon, so we'll be able to do that together. So hopefully Crystal's not going to move the camera. And I forgot to set my timer because I'm on that 12-minute loop for the DSL or um, the DLS, what is that? SL, SLR? SLR. <laughs> it's early. My first cup of coffee this morning. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'm, I'm usually a morning person, so I don't think I'll have a bit of any problem, but you know, just a little discombobulated because I'm. I tried to get everything ready last night so I could get up and get ready and get set right away so that I could get this out of the way first because I, the the girls are going to be here all day and uh, if I record later, it's definitely not going to get posted till tomorrow. And I've really liked having the show posted on Saturday so I don't have to worry about it on Sunday and I can just have the day to relax and not worry about anything on Sunday. So, thanks for stopping by to watch and I hope you enjoy the show. I'm, I welcome all new and previous viewers and I'm glad you've come back for more if you uh, have, been, have watched before. I have a lot to show you today. Last week, I think it was last week, let me look at my show notes. Yeah, last week I had hardly anything to show you because I spent all that time working on the Knitting for Hire. And this week, I think I made up for it. And um, so let me just get right into everything that I've done. Oh, first let me tell you, since I'm holding my Knit One Heart 2 mug, I finally placed an order with Cafe Press and I ordered... Um, one of these, the Say Hello to My Needle End mug, because I think that is so cute. I I have been trying to catch up on um, Sheila and Wendy's show uh, this week. I watched a couple of episodes, but I've been falling behind. I think I have two, maybe two more to go to catch up to, to normal. I think the one I was watching, which I didn't even get all the way through, was the um, their prize of Palooza. And um, I didn't get all the way through that one yesterday, or maybe that was Thursday. Yesterday I didn't get to watch too many podcasts because the boss was in the office and can't really do that while the boss is there. Anyway, um, so yeah, I placed an order with Cafe Press and I got I got the, um, the Knit One Heart 2 mug and I got some more Knitting Blooms swag. And what else? Oh! Speaking of the Prize of Palooza on Knit One Heart 2, I, our group on Ravelry is getting very close to 1,000 members. So I think what I'm going to do is as long as we've reached 1,000 members by January 1st, when I do my jan first January episode, which I think will be on the 7th, I am going to do a prize drawing as well for 1,000 for a thousand members and for the new year and all of that. So if you have been watching and you are not a member of the Ravelry group, please go over and join the Ravelry group because you might get a chance to win um, lots of great prizes. And I will do that, like I said, on January 1st or the first episode in January. Um, which will probably be the same time that I do the drawings for the fourth quarter Knit Your Stash, 
which we all we have that uh, knit your stash contest. You have to knit 6,000 yards or you have to get rid of 6,000 yards out of your stash. You either have to knit it, you have to give the um, the stash away. There's different ways to to rack up your points but it is very doable and there's a couple people that are that are pretty close uh, to doing that. Um, yeah, so that will end December 31st, so I'll do the same draw the drawing at the same time. So we'll have two drawings on the January, I, I want to say it's January 7th uh, episode. So, okay, so let's get right into all of the FOs. This week after all of the Knitting for Hire, I really needed some instant gratification and I think I achieved that this week. I started by knitting a pair of felted clogs which haven't been felted yet. Um, this yarn is, the top yarn is El Rey, I think it's classic wool and the bottom one is just Peyton's. And I bought this yarn. The first time I bought this yarn was when... I can't remember when the first time I bought it was. But I made a pair of slippers and they were my absolute favorite pair of slippers. I don't know what it was about them. And I don't know if it was because the yarn just felt it perfectly. The first pair I made with the El Array and cascade on the bottom. So this pair will be a little bit different, but I'm hoping it will felt up just as nicely. I don't know. I think it was the, it must have been the, the yarn, the way it felted. Um, so I'm looking forward to felting these up, but this was my first pair. I knit this. I started it. I think I started them on Sunday night and I had them finished by Monday because I can knit these this is this was pair number 22 I think um, I've made so many of these I can I could almost just about knit them um, from memory before but because there were so many different sizes it was hard well I knit this pair on Monday and Tuesday and it was done and then I knit this pair, which isn't quite done because it still needs to be seamed up, but the knitting is done. I knit this pair on Wednesday and Thursday. And so it takes me about six hours to knit this size and probably about six and a half hours to do the next size up. But I'm doing the smallest size because every time I have made slippers for myself, they never seem to felt enough and it could possibly be my washer. I'm sure that that's what it is, that it's my washer is not agitating enough. It's not, We I've had the washer, oh golly, a long time and it wasn't a very expensive washer when I bought it. I think it was 20, almost 20 years ago, almost. Not quite, probably not quite 20 years ago. Um, no, I guess Let's see, when did I get that washer? I don't know. It was at least 15 years ago. At least 15 years ago. And like I said, it was probably a $300 washer at the time. So it's not it's not an expensive washer, but boy, it has lasted me a long time. Um, and Steve and I have talked about getting a new washer, but they're so expensive. The ones that we want the washer and dryers that we have looked at are like seven to eight hundred dollars a piece so that's just a big investment and when your washer and dryer are still working why mess with it anyway so yeah so I have two finished pairs of slippers for myself <laughs> and I needed something for myself because all that knitting for hire I deserved it so as soon as I seam up the bottom of these, I will be done with two more pairs of slippers. And that's not all that I finished this week. 
And the, the, the second pair, sorry, the second pair is the same yarn because I had bought two balls because I loved it so much and I only needed one ball for for one pair and then the same patents on the bottom just a different color I could have done the same color but I, I needed a little bit of variety and um, so yeah and you know what those slippers 475 yards a piece yes I have lots of yardage this week. So the next finished object is the basic socks. Done! I had a tiny, tiny bit and I took my marker out, but I think I had, um, I, I can't remember if I had started the ribbing last week. I think I had, I think I had done the ribbing on one and I was ready to cast off and then I started the ribbing on the other one. So I finished that up that's done that was only I only had to do another 12.25 yards to finish those up um, this week so I don't I have them on my blockers but I have them on my blockers to take pictures I don't block my socks I I um I wash them I soak them and then I just lay them flat to dry on the washer because really do you need to block socks? I mean, I guess if I was giving them as a gift to somebody and I wanted them to look all pretty and everything after, you know, packaging them up or something, but they're going on my foot, which is going to stretch them out. So any wrinkles or whatever that they may have, which they usually don't because they're just laying flat on the dryer anyway, they'll come out when I put them on my feet. But another pair of socks finished. I don't have any plans to start any new socks in the immediate future, but probably sometime soon. Um, and then that's not all. I still needed some additional gratification, instant gratification, so I made my first dishcloths, and the ends are not woven any, on these either. I have never done this pattern. This is the grandma's favorite um, washcloth. And I did this one first. This is the one that I did exactly as the pattern was written. Increase up to, I think it's 44 stitches. And then start decreasing. Well, I weighed my ball at the end and I thought I was going to be a little bit short on yarn to do another one at the same size. So the second one I only increased to 42 stitches. So it's slightly smaller. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that on screen. But it is slightly smaller. Um, it's got some of my hair in it. Um, so, but it's not a big deal. I did um, think, I think I had a, enough yarn left over that I could have done two more rows, but I think it would have been cutting it really, really close. So I think the next time that I do it, <clears throat> I'll just keep my ends as short as possible on each end so that when I, um, so I will have enough to actually do both of them the same size from one ball. So here, another finished project, um, and this was 95 yards. So three, oh, four, four finished objects this week, only one of which had been started the week before. Um, yeah, so I did, I needed some instant gratification this week because of all the knitting for hire and the stressful knitting the previous weeks. So four finished objects this week, that's pretty darn good, I think. So, now we can talk about my whips. And I got progress on those too. In addition to all that stuff that I already did, I did I did some progress on my other stuff too. So let's start with Bacardi since it's on the top of my list. And I keep forgetting to restart my timer. That could be bad. Okay, so I did do some work on Bacardi, not a, not a huge amount. Um, I had hoped to get my sleeves done this week, 
Um, but then, like I said, I needed that instant gratification. And boy, it really did motivate me to keep going. So here's my Bacardi. And my stitch marker's right there. My Dicky Do. <laughs> I love it. I love it when uh, when Don and Nicole say that every week. Now that now that I pointed out that out pointed out that Don called it that that first week that she started using it. Anyway, I did uh, about two and a half inches or so. Not a huge amount. I'm hoping to get some decent progress on this. I think I am just past the point that I was when I ripped it out. Remember a few weeks ago after um, Knitting in the Mitten, I, well, at Knitting in the Mitten, I frogged back my sleeve because I realized that I was knitting it on the wrong size needles, only to find out that I knit the entire sweater on the wrong size needles. And then, so I ripped it out for no reason. So basically, I could have probably been done with my sleeve by now. But I'm such a dork that I uh, I was just looking. I wanted to. <laughs> I was looking to see what color I was on because I kind of wanted to start knitting on it again. Because <laughs> I love it. I really, I really do love this project. I think this row is only green, um, so I can. Knit a few, knit a few stitches while I'm talking about it. I really do love this project, and the yarn is very cool. Um, and I really do want to get it, get it completed. The problem is, is now that I know that the sweater is slightly smaller than what I had originally planned on it being, I think it's going to be a little bit too tight, and I'm kind of frustrated with that right now. So I think that's why I'm kind of um, procrastinating finishing this project, but I do really like to work on it. It does go pretty quick. I think I probably did this two, two inches or two and a half inches in probably about maybe an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and that's in the midst of doing other things, you know, jumping up to go to the bathroom and laundry or whatever. So. It doesn't take that long, and and once these are done, the, these are this is both of the sleeves. So once it's done and the body is already done, all I have to do is sew the sleeves in. Actually, I'll have to steep the sleeves first and then sew them in, and then the sweater is done. I may I did try on the sweater again, and it is a little snug. I think it'll be fine, um, but I might try and block it again and stretch it a little bit more and see what happens. But hopefully I'll get some more progress on this this week. I am getting low on a couple of the colors of yarn. The pink is getting pretty low. I'm not, first of all, I'm not worried if I run out of yarn because I do still have a whole nother skein over here. I don't want to have to break into that other skein, but I can if it, it's necessary. If I do, then I'll just, um, I'll probably try and make some kind of other little small sweater in the same colors for my niece. Because um, I know I'll be able to make a whole nother sweater um, in her size with with the same, with the, with the yarn if I have to break into, um, if I have to break into those, those skeins. Otherwise, I don't know what I'll do with it. We'll see. So that's Bacardi. I um, knit about 40, 49 yards, 50 yards on that this week. The next thing is Stinky Pink. And I did get some progress. Not as much as I wanted to. I had hoped to finish this first mitten because I worked on it. I, I restarted it last Friday and I showed it to you. And then I worked on it, I think it was Saturday after I recorded, and Sunday, and or maybe it was just Sunday, and I did, I got um, a little bit further, my marker is here, and I did get a little bit further up. There was one point that I made a mistake in the palm 
chart I wasn't paying attention I kind of got um, a little bit too confident I'm like yeah I know this this uh, this palm pattern I don't have to read the chart all the time well then I just kept going and I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing and then I realized that somehow I got off and I thought about leaving it I thought you know what it's not gonna be a big deal it's gonna be on the palm but the way that this this um, kind of has the diagonal stripe it really did break it up so I ended up tinking back and redoing it I think I was only back like a row and a half or two rows I think I realized it on the next row so I had to tink back that my that whole row and another row so not not a huge huge deal and I did go up another needle size I think I originally started this project on a zero and it was way too tight and down here in the bottom of my bag I had that first piece this was on a size zero it was way too tight I I um I took this off the needles and I started again on a size one and as I was getting up to the palm part, I was thinking that, well, I took, I actually measured my gauge and my gauge, I was still getting nine and a half, close to 10 stitches an inch. And I was nervous that it was going to be too tight around my palm. My hands are pretty, are pretty narrow. So even though I wasn't getting quite the right gauge, um, the pattern was would have been slightly bigger I think if I was getting or the the project would have been slightly bigger but my hands are, are kind of narrow so it would have fit me fine but I was just worried because the the, the um, palm of your hand is a little bit wider than say your fingers or your wrist so I was nervous it was going to be a little bit too tight so I did go up to an, um, one and a half I want to say I went up to a 2.5 originally when I jumped from a 2.0 to 2.5 and then I think this is a 2.75 so really it's a quarter of a millimeter difference and um, I don't I really don't think it makes that much of a difference but I just need to check check my time my coffee is in my way of my my timer over here but and it didn't really make that much of a difference so you can't really tell that I went up a needle size somebody had said before when I was doing this one she said oh just just jump up a needle size well I thought jumping up a needle size a whole needle size um, would be too much but I tried it and it, it seems to be fine so I am on a 2.75 now Cody's over there digging <laughs> in the blankets so I'm really, really, really liking this. And I, like I said, I hope to have this full mitten done. I did this much from here, from here to here, from my marker to where I am now, in about an hour. So it is a very quick project. I could have gotten this mitten done this week had I not been working on all those slippers. So I'm hoping that I can stay focused on this to get the, at least this mitten done this week because actually I really like both of them done because they're really nice and just having it on my hand just now it was really it's really warm too I really like it um so yeah I'm, I'm very excited about getting this done I am liking the Knit Picks palette so much better on this size needle when I had it on the zeros it just it was it really was too dense of a fabric and I was really concerned that I had bought all that palette and I don't know can you see it can you see it right up there nope that's up that's up too high you can only see this this row anyway I bought all that I think 20 21 balls so I was like oh did I really make a mistake but I'm really liking it now and I'm very excited about getting doing some new other mittens after this one. So there's Stinky Pink. Stinky Pink I got, um, I did about 24 and a half yards on that project this week. And that's not all. 
I also worked on Citron. I have not worked on this in a few weeks. And I feel bad because the Citron lit along with Dramatic Knits, Steve and Callie. It ended November 30th. You're supposed to have your project done by November 30th. And I'm nowhere near done. I'm on section three. Here is section one, section two, and section three. And I'm not even done with section three yet. There's my marker where I was from like, I don't know, however many weeks ago that I actually worked on this project. Four weeks ago, no, five, six, holy crap. Last time I worked on this project was before episode 27. That's very sad. <laughs> very sad. But I did work on this project. I tried to get a full repeat done this week. Um, I worked on this project at night. I was working on the slippers at work. Um, but I worked on this project at night a few nights. And I almost sat down and worked on it last night. But instead I got out the spinning wheel because I haven't spun in a while either. So I think I'm on like row 16. Let's see. It might be 17 now because I'm on a, no, I'm on a, I am on 16 because I'm on a um, wrong side row. And I'm using my cool little stitch markers that Lois gave me. These little square ones. I love them. And I'm using my signature needles, which I love. And this is Malabrigo Baby Merino Lace. So it's a big difference to go from knitting on this, which you're holding two strands of worsted weight double, to knitting on this. <laughs> Big difference! Yeah. <laughs> you know, but sometimes it's nice to have that different um, weight of yarn because your hands, sometimes working on this little itty bitty stuff, your hands can get kind of cramped up and sometimes on the big stuff too can get cramped up. So it's good to have a couple varieties of different projects. I always like to have, like I have, I'll have a sock and something that's worsted or something or a little heavier too. So reasonable progress considering I haven't worked on this project in four weeks, five weeks. So hopefully I will finish repeat number three and get a good portion of repeat number four, section four done. And I think I am going to seven sections. So, because I have two, oops, two balls of this yarn that I'd like to use up in this project. So that Citron, I did work, I did do 30 yards on that and 30 yards of lace, wow. That didn't really take me that long. I think I worked on it two nights while we were watching um, X Factor, which by the way, I'm not I'm not feeling the X factor. I'm I like the I like the contestants. I just don't I don't know. I don't know what it is about it that I don't like. I guess I guess my thing is is that the contestants some of the contestants are good, but most of them are not their performances aren't as good. They I mean, when I watch Idol, I feel like Oh my gosh, they are so good. Almost every single um, contestant. I'm not feeling that with um, with this one. And actually, I even mentioned to Steve that when they do their group performances and they have the background singers, the song sounds better with the background singers singing with them. So, I don't know. There are really some really good singers, though. Steve and I have all, all said all along that one of the girls is going to win because those girls are really, really good. But we might be um, skipping ahead and only watching... Um, I think this came out of my stinky pink bag. We might be only watching like the results shows and stuff like that. So, anyway, back to knitting. 
So that was Citron. And guess what? I have some new whips. I have so many things on the needles right now, but I guess I didn't have enough. <laughs> um, so let me tell you about what else I have on the needles. Um, look what this is. <laughs> Another slipper. Another slipper for me. And this one, <clears throat> I was hoping to have this, <clears throat> excuse me, three full pairs done this week. And I could have because I did this slipper on Thursday. Um, and it really, it's not quite done, but I have the top part done. I have the bottom. I have to put the bottom together and then do the, the, um, the bumper on this one. And... I had one one more slipper to do, and I had planned on doing it yesterday, but um, I didn't. I think I can't remember if I took this project to work with me to, yesterday. No, I don't think I did. Um, but I didn't have time to knit yesterday at work anyway, so I didn't finish three pairs of slippers. Only two, two and a half, two and a half pairs. So, that, and yes, this is still the same yarn. This one I'm holding um, on this pair and the other pair as well. I held the multicolor together. On this one, I'm, I think I still had enough to do one more pair holding the multi together, but I was a little bit nervous that I would run out of yarn and I'm kind of anal having matchy matchy stuff. So, Unless, I'm, unless I do it on purpose, which I do plan on making some slippers that are not matchy-matchy with all the leftover stuff. I mean, this is, this is num pair number 24, this pair right here that I've made. So you can imagine how much leftover wool that I have from all 24 pairs. So this one, I'm holding one strand of the... Of the multi and one strand of the solid together and that's just so that I don't run out of the multi I have plenty of the solid I have tons of the Peyton's um, wool and it's easily to get easy to get to and this is the first pair that I did not change the cuff on all every other pair that I have done, I've always done two color. Yeah, I've always done two color clogs, where I have one color on the bottom, a different color on the top, and then the same color that's on the bottom on the cuff. And this time I did not do that. I just continued the cuff, the same color up. I did have I do have the different color on the bottom. I have yet to make a pair top and bottom of the same yarn. Now, maybe I should try that because maybe that'll make a difference with how things felt. I'm not really sure. But I foresee a few more pairs of slippers in my future this week because they are a huge stash buster and I have a huge stash of wool, of Peyton's, Peyton's wool. I have Peyton's wool. I have mostly Peyton's wool. And then I have a whole bunch of Cascade over here that I kind of was going to use for a sweater. It's all one color. And I was kind of going to use it for a sweater, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use it for a sweater yet. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. But I do plan to make some more slippers this week. I'm probably going to try and make a pair of slippers for my mother-in-law and my father-in-law for Christmas. Because especially my mother-in-law, she's she loves the slippers. She's gone through them. She's, she's even requested yarn for darning them and fixing them. So I know she wears them. So I probably, since it, I can whip them up pretty quickly, I'll probably try and whip her up a pair um, before Christmas. 
and even if I don't get it done before Christmas, which really I did two and a half pairs this week, so the chances of me not being able to get a pair done for her for Christmas are slim. Anyway, but yes, I have lots of slippers in my future. The next pair, I think, I, I think I'm going to do my father-in-law's first because he, I think I have to do the largest size for him. So that's going to, I, I, somehow I had this laying next to me, so I'm putting it back in my bag. So he has the largest size, and then I'll probably, since I'm making a pair for them, I'll have to make a pair for Steve for Christmas too, and he gets the second to largest size. So, I think the men's he gets the men's medium so yeah more slippers and that's not all let's see what's next slippers and then okay let's jump to this one um i made the first two dishcloths well i started another one here it is this one's going a little bit slower the first two I made one one night and one the next night. And they were pretty quick. This one is kind of dragging, I think, because... Um, why? I don't know. I think I've just been working on other things in the evenings that I haven't been working on this. Because I worked on Citron for a while. Um, but they are pretty quick. And I like the pattern. I don't know why it took me so long to try it. It's very, very easy and simple. This one I'm just past um, where you start decreasing. And I am planning on making, trying, I, I'm going to try with this ball to get two dishcloths with 44 stitches. Um, we'll see how it goes. If I have to rip it back because I can only get, I don't quite get it to the end then I'll have to rip back or I'll just cut it short and it'll be angled and I do have a pl have plans I have another ball in here to do this one this one that this one's made out of the first one was made out of peaches and no I think it was sugars and cream this one's peaches and cream um, that I had gotten in a goodie bag I think it was at Knitopia actually at that time it was knit away but anyway and then I have a, have a plan to make two more out of this one. And I think I have about five more balls of cotton up there that I will probably make some more. Um, I'm thinking about giving some of these away as gifts this year. Because they are very useful. And again, um, the dishcloths, two of them take 95 yards. I have did half of one, so I'm counting like 25 yards. And I have two more project bags here and only one more thing. Oh, <laughs> I have only one more thing on my, my whips, but the next thing is to be started. Okay, so I didn't have any business starting this this week, but it looked like a lot of fun, and I did it. I am doing the Advent Shawl Knit Along. It's a mystery shawl, and I have the first clue done. And I think it's going to be very hard for me to keep up because it is an Advent. It's um, you get a new clue every single day in the month from December first to December twenty fourth. And I always liked the Advent calendar when I was a kid. My favorites were. The ones with the chocolates in them. <laughs> chocolate. I mean, you get a piece of chocolate every day. And my fondest memory is of my friend who was, um, her parents, her mother was German. And I don't know where she got this advent calendar with the chocolate. I think it was, I don't know if it was German chocolate or Swedish chocolate. I don't know, but oh my god, this chocolate was amazing. And I was a kid. I was like 5th grade, 6th grade. And um, in December, my friend would, she was so nice, she would share her chocolate with me. <laughs> Not every day, but on some days she would let me have it. But it was so good. And I've spent, 
the last, what, 27 years, something like that, trying to find that kind of calendar that has that chocolate. Every time I find a calendar, one of those advent calendars with chocolate in it, I buy it and I taste the chocolate and it's never the same. I swear, I, she must have gotten it from Germany or something, um, had it shipped over from a family member because it was so good and I have never been able to find anything like it. Anyway, so I'm doing the advent shawl. Now they had an advent, and in fact I think they have an advent scarf too, which probably would have been more doable, but I don't really wear a lot of scarves. I wear scarves for warmth, not for fashion. So I don't know that I would wear something like that. Um, so I decided I was gonna do this. And I am using my Vulmai's lace garn and this is the first time i've used the wool mice and you know we're going to do the the wool mice cow and i'll talk about that in a minute but the pattern calls for lace and it only calls for seven or eight hundred yards something like that and i rarely start a project with a yarn that i have an abundance of unless I'm going to use it for the entire project. Well, I decided the the um the skein of Volmai's lace comes in like 17 or 1800 yards. And I thought, you know what? If I wait around until I find the absolute perfect project for it, it's never going to get used. This project, they recommend white or green. This one is kind of a tealy green, but I thought it was green enough that I decided I was going to use it. So I did. I got the first clue. I downloaded it first thing Thursday morning, and I started it. And you can see I have a gazillion lifelines in there. I had to start this thing three times. The first time because I thought I was going to be smart. And there's three charts, one for each section. There's a section here, a section here, and a section here. A right section, a middle section, and a left section. Well, I thought I was going to be smart just glancing at the chart, and I thought, well, I'll just use the second chart for the first chart and then do it. And then as I'm working along, I'm thinking, hmm, I'm wondering if these decreases, these knit two togethers or slip slip knits, are supposed to be reversed on the other side. And sure enough, yes, they were. So I was like 10 rows into it at that point. Um, and so I had to rip it back. No big deal. Then I started it again. And I got to, um, I think it's on row 27. No, I don't remember what row. But there's a row that has these big, this one, um, this one stitch that you make three stitches out of five. And it was a little fiddly, and I have never done that before. Or I might have done it before, but anyway, it was a little fiddly. So the first time, I didn't have a lifeline. So when my stitches just popped off my needles while I was trying to get it in there, I had to rip it back because there was no fixing it. There are so many yarn overs and so many knit two togethers and when things pop off the needles like that it's not it's not a good thing. So I had to rip it back. And then that then that was the first time I put in the first lifeline which is here. And then after I did that funny little stitch I decided to put another lifeline in just to be safe. Um, and then I did another lifeline just before I had to do that stitch again because I was nervous after the first time having the fiddliness. Um, I did another lifeline right before the row that I had to do that fiddly stitch again. So I have, right now I have four lifelines in here. Because you know if you have the lifelines, there's not a problem. But when you don't have the lifelines, that's when you have a problem. So I'll put in I'll put in a lifeline every five rows if I have to, in order to prevent problems. <laughs> it's kind of like a confidence booster because then I'm not worried. I'm just gonna go through it, and if I have to rip it back, I have to rip it back. 
couple of rows. So I did not work on this yesterday. I had planned on coming home last night. I knew after the first day of doing it that it wasn't going to be a project that I could work on at work when people are coming in and out all day because that's kind of how it is on Fridays. So I didn't even take it to work with me yesterday. And like I said, I really didn't have time to work on knitting yesterday anyway. But this would definitely have not have been the right project to be working on. Um, even if I did have knitting time. But I had plans on coming home and working on it last night. And trying to get the second clue done, which came out yesterday. And I didn't do it. So I think I'm going to be struggling trying to keep up with this project. Because there is a new... Um, clue every day. I'm going to do my absolute best, but I'm not going to stress over it if I don't. But it would be nice to have to wear on Christmas. I, I need to be able to knit it and get it finished. Hopefully the last day, uh, well, I guess that won't really won't work because I'd still have to block it. But if I could get it finished early enough in the day, that I might be able to wear it to Christmas dinner at my mother-in-law's because we go um, over there for Christmas, usually Christmas Eve. Anyway, it's going to be fun. And I do love this wool mice. And with all the knitting that I did this week, so this project, let me tell you, this project I did 57 yards. And this wool mice, awesome! I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking into getting some more of this lace um, for future projects. But let me tell you how many yards that I knit this week. When I added it up, I mean, I knew that it was growing fast with the slippers. I knit 1,481 and a half yards this week. Almost 1,500 yards. That's awesome. I can't believe I knit that much. And it all has to do with those slippers because it was almost 500 yards in each pair of slippers. And I did two and a half pairs. So, hello, I deserved a prize. And I got a prize. <laughs> yes, I did. I got a prize. Do you want to know what my prize was? I, yesterday, okay. So yesterday, I am, it was about, it was a little after 11 o'clock and I thought, I'm going to go check and see what's in the Wool Mice store. And there was grab bags. And I looked at them and I thought, mm, I would like to order a gem bag. And I looked at it and I almost clicked that button and I thought, no, I have, I don't know. 15, 16, something like that, skeins of wool mice. And I had, this is, I started knitting this on Thursday. So this was really the only wool mice that I had ever used of the 15 or 16 or 20 skeins or whatever I have. I thought, you know what? I need to wait until I use it. Even though I've used this and I'm loving it so far, I thought, step away. So I didn't buy anything. And I forgot to reset my timer again. Sorry. So I said step away. And then I went back at like 12.45. An hour and a half later. And there were still fool mice in the shop. And still the things that I wanted. So... I ordered a grab bag. Yep. And it's going to be a surprise, which I love, which I think is so much fun. And then I was then I was stalking the um the Volmai's um group with the the in search of thread to see what people were selling. And I did contact a couple people about their Volmai's and um the first person had already sold theirs. The second person I think she's in England. I she responded, um, but didn't give me all the information I needed. So I'm kind of waiting to hear back from her. Um, so I could have my grab bag plus 
another skein. And I might have ordered two grab bags, maybe. <laughs> because after I ordered the one, I was talking to my friend Valerie, and we were trying to figure out, because it seems like every time I order from there, my PayPal doesn't go through. It's like it goes through, and then I get then it gets kicked back and when I get done with PayPal it says we could not process your order at this time and I wonder if it has anything to do with where I'm having it shipped because I have it shipped to my office and I don't know if I have a confirmed address for PayPal for my office it could be that because I have it shipped to my office because it requires a signature. So we were kind of playing with it and I kind of decided I'm going to try and order another bag to see what happens. And the same thing happened. But what has happened in the past is that I'll place the order and then on Monday, because usually when I place the order at 11 o'clock or whatever, this at my time, Eastern time, they've already closed for the day. They've already shut things down and because um, they're in Germany. So then on Monday, I get a message from them saying, you have an invoice to pay. So I pay the invoice, and then it ships out after that. So I'm going to have like four or five skeins of Volmeis coming, and if, um, if I'm having this much fun knitting with it, I can see that I'll be knitting with it a lot. So I might be using up my stash. And I definitely want to get some more of this um, this lace. I saw a couple people in, I think, Australia and somewhere else has the um, one of the pinks that I really, really like. But I'm not sure I want to pay for the extra shipping to get it. I don't know. Because the, the lace itself is like $60.00. $65. I don't know. It's I have to do a conversion because I think they it's their dollars or something. I don't know. Australian dollars versus US dollars. I don't know what the exchange rate is on that. But it's a really nice pink and I don't know. It could be kind finding its way to my stash sometime soon. But yeah, I'm I've only done one one um clue on this. Hopefully today during Knit Club. In a few hours, um, I will be able to do that. Although, with with Knit Club, I might not work on lace. And I think I'm getting close to an hour, so I'm going to try and speed this along because I still have a few things to talk about. Okay, so the Volmeis Knit Along. I did wind my yarn last night, and I'll be using this one. And it's the... Um, I don't even something John John's Bear und Brunsils. I don't know. It's this color. It's the the red the the reds and the peaches and the um the greens and the browns. So I will be casting on this today for um Magrathea. I think it's pronounced Magrathea. And this is a knit along that Mommy Needs Yarn, Erin, and I are doing with our groups. So if you'd like to join along, the Knit Along will start. Actually, it started on December 1st, but I haven't started mine, and I don't know. I haven't checked in with Erin um, in the last day or so to see if she started hers. I think she said she wouldn't start hers until the weekend as well because I think she had finals this week or something. So I'm casting on today. I was looking at the pattern and I think it says a three millimeter needle and that's like a size two. And I don't know, I think I'm gonna I have to I think I'm gonna have to swatch on this to to see where I'm gonna be on this one because I think a size two is gonna be too small because that's gonna be like sock weight. So I mean this is like I think I would knit this on a size two for socks. And I think that would be too dense for a shawl. So I'm going to look at it. I think it said 20, 20 stitches and 4 inches. So um, that's only 5 stitches per inch. Which I think on a size 2 would be 
I'd get more than five stitches per inch. Anyway, so I'm going to I'm gonna do some swatching today at Club and hopefully get this project started. Um, it does run, I, did I say it runs from December 1st to February 1st? It's, yeah, till February 1st. And there will be prizes for this now long as well, but you must finish your shawl. Two months to do it. It looks like a fairly simple thing to do. Um, it's one skein. So get working on it so you can win some prizes. I have to start collecting some prizes. I have um, a few books that I'm going to be giving away. Um, I don't know. What else? We'll see. If anybody wants to donate prizes, let me know. Because we have lots of drawings coming up. We'll have the... Um, the 1000 New Year drawing will have the um, Knit Your Stash drawing. We'll have the um, Stinky Pink drawing. That's at the end of February. We'll have the, um, oh, not, it's actually not the Stinky Pink. It's the, um, the, the, the Colorwork Mitten Cow. <laughs> I'm, I said Stinky Pink because I'm doing the Stinky Pink. But you can knit. Um, any of the five patterns that Valerie has and maybe I have word from a little birdie who told me that she has another pattern that she's working on I don't know if it'll be released within the knit along but um, she has another pattern that she's working on that hopefully will be released sometime in the near future and maybe you'll have a chance to knit that one as well but you do have to finish your project on that too to be entered in the drawing but you have Still, you have um, till the end of February. Is it the end of February? No. I can't remember. I think it's the end of January. Anyway, I have to look at my notes. Yeah, I think I said the end of January so that you could have still have February to wear them. Anyway, I'll have to look at my notes on that. So, there's lots of drawings coming up. So... Join the Ravelry group so that you can be entered in all those drawings. Okay. So, I still have much more to talk about, but I'm going to try and move this along. Um, I might have to skip over some stuff and save it for next week. I think I talked about almost everything. Um, one thing I do want to talk about is a new app that I downloaded this week. It's called um, Yarn U. That's yarn and then the letter U. And it's very interesting. It's an app that you can put on your iPhone. And I don't know if it's available for Droid yet. But um, you can get it on your iPhone, your iPod Touch, or your um, iPad. And it's an app about yarn. It's like Yarn University, I think, is what, what, what the U is for. And at first I was like, what am I going to do with this, this app? It's not like a tool that you would use um, on a daily basis in your knitting like like the tool that I use for the I spin toolkit for when I'm spinning or what have you but what it is is kind of like a yarn index and you can search by manufacturer and look at the yarns that are listed now it's still a new app and they they continue to update it with new yarn so not not every yarn in the world is in this, but there is quite a few. And what's nice about it is you can go and look by, by yarn manufacturer and look at the yarns that they have listed. They give a brief description about the yarn. They tell you, um, you know, some, they give you, might give you a suggestion for a pattern to use for it. They tell you about um, the yarn weight, the stitch guy, the stitch gauge, and what needles, the fiber content, the yardage per ball. They provide their own pros and cons. Uh, they provide the price, and then give you um, a link to a web yarn store that you can buy it. They have um, a section where you can 
provide your own comments about that yarn. Um, it's just, it's very, it's very interesting. What I like best though, is not searching by yarn brand where I did look at this and I started looking at, at everything. And, um, I did find a few yarns that I had never heard of before and learned about those, which was very cool. But what I like best is like, let's say you want to find a new fingering weight yarn that you haven't used before and you want to learn about it. So you can do a filter by fingering weight. Oops, I guess you have to hit apply. And then it will bring up all the fingering weight yarns that this app has so far. And then you can compare them. Um, again, they have the um, a short description, the um, the weight of the yarn, fingering, worsted, whatever. It looks like they tell you how many grams it is. The stitch gauge, including suggested needle size, fiber content, yardage, again, pros and cons, a place to add your own comments, and price, and then a link right to the um, a website where you can purchase it. And I thought this was very interesting because there is a couple of um, yarns in here that I, I mean, that I, hadn't, I guess maybe I had seen or heard about in passing, but never really, I don't know, you know, there's so many yarns out there. How can, how can you know them all? So, so yeah, this was a very interesting little thing to be able to have just you know if you have some some time and you want to look things up like for instance I guess I had known about comfy fingering weight from knit picks but I guess I didn't realize it was in fingering weight I think they have a comfy that's a little bit heavier but anyway so yeah I thought it was very very interesting app the app is $2.99 and again, they're constantly updating it. Um, this was my favorite part about the searching by weight, yarn weight, and then comparing comparing the different the different ones. She does have a lot of knit picks yarns. I think almost all knit picks yarns um, that I've seen. Um, a good portion of the um, the Noro yarns. Uh, there's a lot of different brands in here. But there's only, I think there's only a few brands that she has all of the yarns. But here's, here, I was reading this this morning. I was looking at this fingering weight and they have Wool My Superwash in here. And this was my favorite part when I was reading this. And it is so, so true. And let me just read, read you the, the brief description of what she has here for Wool My's uh, Superwash. 100%. Think of it this way. It's Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Nearly every week, this super popular German yarn for the super popular German yarn. And that is so true. I mean, when you are stalking the Volmai site, it is like Black Friday every Friday of the year. I I almost cracked up laughing, but I was reading it at 5.30 this morning in bed while my husband was sleeping next to me and I didn't want to wake him up. But yes, that is so true about stalking the Volmai store. It's like Black Friday every Friday of the year. But she she does. She gives she gives a nice little description about the different yarns. You know, so if you haven't used the yarn and you're in the shop you know, shopping at that moment and you just want to get somebody else's opinion on it, you can go in here and, and check out um, what she has to say or what other people. I mean, the more people that are, have this app and the more people that add their comments, the better the app's going to get. So, and she continues to add more and more yarns, I think, um, each week or I'm not sure how often, but... Um, but I have noticed that there's been a couple of different updates, not since I bought it. Or I actually, I didn't even buy it. She actually contacted me and, and sent me a code. But, um, but yeah, I've been playing with it, and I really liked the information that, that's available here. So if you're looking for an app 
that and I hope I'm still recording. So if you're looking for an app that has some information about yarn, um, then this is a really good one for, for information about yarn. And I'm really enjoying um, reading about all the different stuff. So you can sort, sort, sort by hand dyed and like I said, the different manufacturers, hand wash, um, Oh, this one has a sort by crochet, so I guess what's good for crochet. And there is there is also a list of some free patterns. Oh, maybe that's what that is. Crochet is probably free patterns. Let me double check. No. Nope, it's it's yarn. So it must be something that's good for crochet. Again, I have I've only had the app for a couple of days and really this morning at 5 30 this morning when the cat woke me up and i'm laying in bed thinking do i get up or do i stay in bed and i'm looking at this i looked at it i was playing with it for about a half hour or so so really that's all i've played with it but i'm sure that there's so much more um to look at you can sort by novelty yarn there's a sock yarn sport I mean, all kinds of different things. And then the, just sorting by the different um, yarn brands that I had never heard of, like this one, St. Dennis. Never heard of that yarn brand. Um, so, yeah, learn something new with yarn. So, I think that's about it. I think we're well over an hour this week. Sorry about that. <laughs> to make up for having short episodes the last couple of weeks. I think there's a couple more things that I probably haven't talked about. Um, I'll just save them for next week because there's always next week. So I will uh, talk to you next week. Hope you're knitting blooms this week and hope you have a great week. Bye for now.